So our Concord is ready to go and we can continue with our checklist. Now, before we do, let's do one more thing. Um, I always, my favorite um, or default position is distant time. So we know that the distance for our next waypoint is uh, 16 nautical miles. And because we are now uh, still, we have now stopped, uh, obviously the time is infinite. In this um, screen, we can see that we are going from waypoint 0 to waypoint 1. Waypoint 0, as I mentioned before, is our current position. If we want to make sure that we are not going to follow the route from where we are, uh, but from any waypoint, we can change, for example, and say we want to loot the route from waypoint 1 to waypoint 2 or that we're going to go from waypoint 5 to 6 or whatever we go back to 0 and 1 and automatically this auto leg mode switch tell us that when we are reaching waypoint 1 it will automatically load the next leg leg 1 2 on IS, in INS I do the same with a little change now, this, uh, after our departure, there's a very important waypoint, which is called UPGAS. Now, UPGAS is our acceleration to supersonic waypoint, and I always like to have that one in reference. That is waypoint number four. I can change the waypoint to number four and click on Insert. It's 120 nautical miles from our current position. Uh, but if I do this, as soon as we load waypoint number one, this screen is also going to change from waypoint one to waypoint two. And I'm not going to be able to keep waypoint four as a reference. What I do here is I set this to manual. So I make sure that it's not going to change automatically when I reach waypoint number one. Now, continue with our Ah, oh, now let's do um, something else. Now, during your first flight, during your your first uh, navigations okay now let's check let's check our departure i i can't remember if it's here i'm pretty yeah here it is so our standard departure we're going to uh, take off on runway two to the left and we need to follow this departure and then uh, here come here to woodley and our first waypoint sorry uh, our first waypoint is Woodley. Now, what we need to do, sorry, we need to do is to keep our runway heading and then turn to um, following the London um, VOR uh, heading 250 on, on course 250 and then at, 10, at 7 nautical miles we need to change to um, heading 271 uh, until our Copton, oh, sorry, our uh, Woodley VOR. Now, that is a problem first. It's um, complicated because during your first flight, you are going to be so busy doing so many things, making sure you, you are following the, the noise, noise abatement procedure, uh, you are taking so many things that this is highly complicated during your first flight. So, I would recommend you to cheat at least at first during your first flights until you get used to Concorde and you feel more comfortable with, with Concorde flying. So as I said, I suggest for the, your first tutorial flights to make a little bit of cheating and then after following the runway heading, make a direct to the Woodley NDB. But because the Woodley NDB is our first waypoint, what I suggest is not using the manual and radio navigation mode if you remember we set this to to radial uh, my suggestion is to switch them to INS and don't make use of the radio navigational aids so now our INS is pointing directly to the uh, Woodley NDB which is located at 16 miles from our current point I know it's cheating but I recommend so let's continue where we left it uh, we loaded all the INS configuration. Now, we need to calculate the performance. Um, the performance and, and the um, reference speeds change an awful lot 
depending on the aircraft weight. Of course, the weight depends on the amount of fuel we load and also depends on how many people there's on board. We, there are two ways we can do this. One is using um, the FS Labs own tools. I'm going to, sorry, uh, take away this and take out the menu. So we can go here to the air aircraft fuel load and we've got some presets. So if we are flying to London, New York, or I mean, this way is London, New York, it's going to load um, 92 tons. Then we are going to set an aircraft load, default load with 100 passengers, and that gives us a zero fuel weight of um, 88 tons, 88,400 uh, kilograms. We hit on OK and we've set that. Now, Flysim Labs includes a tool called Perform Calculator. Now, uh, sorry, <coughs> we select the airport, which is New York um, the Airport. We select our departure runway, which is, uh, I'm sorry, not New York, sorry, London Heathrow. We select the runway 27 left. And then uh, take into account the, the current weight, current wind direction, which obviously is 27 left because we've got a heading wing of almost 20 knots. Um, then we take go to the takeoff form. And we've got some several data here that we need to set on Concord. At first, maybe complicated. So there's a help here button. We uh, click send up, oh, sorry. And if you have a look at this uh, airspeed box, and if you see uh, some other settings, you're going to see that they change the moment I click on send. For example, have a look at the reference speeds, which are 166, 201, and 222. Have a look at how they change send. You see? So everything is set automatically. This is very good, but did you notice that, uh, one moment, uh, sorry. So we flight sim labs performance calculator. Did you notice that the only airports available are this list? What happens, for instance, if you want to make I don't know, let's say uh, I'm a Spanish person, so what happens if, if I want to fly from Madrid to the Canary Islands to Tenerife? Maybe uh, I don't have the performance for this airport, I cannot do this with this takeoff calculator. So yes, this is very handy and this is very useful for the port route, uh, standard route, but what can we do in other situations? Well, then th we've got mm, the tool Conco Performance System. This is a completely 100% uh, free tool developed by um, a French person called Pierre Sachin, and which is a just wonderful person. I'm, I would like to consider myself a friend of him, even if we don't know each other, but we've been in touch for a very long time. And he puts an amazing effort, time and effort, in creating a fantastic and great free tool uh, for all of us. Uh, he's French, uh, so his website is half in French and half in English. And here we can always find the last version. I would really like to uh, recommend you to make a donation. So have a look at this. The total amount of investment from version one, version one, um, he invests in hardware to try everything that um, that he buys. So this is his needs, and this is what his recovered donation right now. Let's imagine that there are 1,000 users in the world, which is very likely. One euro per user would make 1,000 euros. Four euros, or five, let's round out, five euros per user would have get him the, the, uh, the needed amount. So even if you think that uh, your money, uh, that you're not, go not going to be able to donate a great amount of money, please consider that even small donations, maybe you can donate only one euro now, but maybe you can donate another euro in three months' time, whatever. Uh, as you can see, as you are going to see now, uh, it's a wonderful tool that could be perfectly be sold for, for, for any money and he's offering it for free. So here you've got the latest version, you just download the setup and here it is. <clears throat> 
So uh, even if we've got already all the necessary settings for, for departure, uh, I'm going to show you how very quickly, I'm not going to get in, in depth, what steps you need to do in order to get all the calculations um, required for the, this London-New York uh, route. I've just had an unexpected guest, so I've lost a little bit uh, track of what I was saying before, so sorry if I say any inconsistence or incoherence or what I said before. Right, we were at the point where I was going to show you how to make all the performance calculations required for any route using Flight uh, Concord Performance System. I'm not going to be get into details, just showing very quickly. So, we departure from Echo Golf Lima Lima. <coughs> Oops, sorry, Echo Golf Lima Lima. Uh, we set the date in order to get the appropriate weather. And we check the, the, the departure runway. As we can see, there's a tailwind in runway 01 um, and 09 left. So we need to choose an appropriate runway. In this case, we'll have a headwind of 11 knots. Um, and Conco Performance Systems gets the, that information from the NOAA. Uh, database at the moment at the moment of this uh, making this video uh, with version 3 uh, revision 149 there's no possibility to use after sky of any other weather uh, engine so the only two options is to use this real weather or either to use uh, a custom weather now um, so we've got them we've got the meta and uh, now we need to load the route uh, okay so because I made this change in the weather apply all right now we need to load the route uh, it just happens that I've got this route ready but um, what if I don't let's imagine for example if you remember on the Concord flights on the Concord X simulator there was um, a documentation where we had uh, flight plan routes let's say that instead of this one we need the maybe the New York route, but instead of departing from, uh, well, let's find not Air France, because I actually haven't, I have never used this flight, well, anyway. So let's imagine that I want to take this route. As you can see, Concorde uses some standard uh, intersections uh, and navigational aids, but most of the times um, it uses only coordinates. So. If we want to make um, uh, a route, if we want to plant a route with any planning tool, side of FlySim Commander, if we hit fixes and intersections, as we can see, uh, the, how we get exactly these coordinates. For instance, we need to get uh, Air France really is different. So let me choose another 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 flight plan by British Airways. Let's say. I don't know, uh, London Charters? No, let's find, for example, the Toronto. Let's find Toronto route. So, we are here at the, uh, sorry, here. We need to find this waypoint, which is, or for example, this one, which is uh, 57 north and then 50 west. Now, how we add it? I, I like for these situations a lot flights in Commander because if we go to Window, User Waypoint, then we can create any waypoint we want and then just name it as we want. So for example, some of the waypoints I've already created for Concord is this one um, and we you name it, <coughs> sorry, you uh, give it a proper name and then you just add the latitude and longitude uh, that you want depending on, on, on your route uh, that the only thing you need to do so after that uh, you're going to see the user waypoints I'm going to activate them here uh, UWP user waypoints and if you see for example let's clean the waypoints delete and route waypoint yeah so if I zoom enough as you can see here this is my user waypoint so you can see that you can for example, let's imagine that we start here. Uh, the UPGAS is actually a point not included in, in it's not an intersection on a fixed, it's a particular, it's the acceler supersonic acceleration waypoint and it's only available for Concord. I right click and then I click UPGAS and then I look for the next waypoint. 
user waypoint which is here and then click on my next use user waypoint which is here so that you complete uh, well I've just click a, a fix but I could also use the the user waypoint and that's a, a very convenient way of, of doing so of, of planning having your plan so I'm going to load the Heathrow uh, Kennedy Airport route which is here then I'm going to save it save us and then you just click the name you want for example a tutorial so this is our route for our tutorial now I've already have it I saved it I chose the path for of course for flying commander but I also have it in the folder uh, were prepared uh, load saves sorry the flight plans so now what I have to do is to I need to add this route if I click on load I will see that in in documents prepare files uh, this is I can find here the the tutorial route if I have a look at the different options I, I won't find this route this is because we need to create if you remember can you remember the SIVA cards the ADEO cards that we have here in this folder now we need to create first these cards before we can actually continue so we go to add route and then here we do have the um, the all the the, the routes uh, saved in fly sim um, in fly simulator or prepared and here we've got our tutorial if we click on open uh, we see that the ADEO files they were created because I already had this route it's created one called um, number two so we see here that we've got the first version which was prepared for this tutorial and the second version which is this one um, now what I can do is load and then I've got the two plans I'm going to load the, load the tutorial open and there it goes well it will go now we can see the plot of all graphical representation and this root log is exactly the same as this other document where we are going to see all the waypoints the coordinates and when we need to change uh, our card so if we go here and just open this one this number two card sorry not this one uh, here the text file the text file we have all the information that we need during flight for example at the first waypoint we load the card number two then when we arrived uh, between waypoints Sierra Mike uh, 15 West and Sierra Mike 20 West we need to load the following ADEO card which is number two and so on and so forth we've got all the coordinates the distance between those coordinates so let's go back to Concord performance system we can check the weather if we want that's optional the arrival uh, we need to include an alternate in this case let's go for Newark Airport we get the distance 18 nautical miles the payload uh, now for the payload I've chosen I've chosen 92 passengers and I also set a default load uh, of the rag, uh, galley racks of 20, um, uh, 220 kilograms except 221 for just one purpose to get the exact zero fuel, fuel weight as we have in the um, uh, in the default tutorial flight so let's compare what uh, Concorde performance system calculate for fuel and and reference speeds um, with with the same flight plan compared with them um, with the standard performance tool by flight sim labs so we've got the payload now we go to the fuel on balance we've got a departure subsonic if you remember the our acceleration point was 127 and uh, let's see it here with the 2d panel our the up gas acceleration point was at 227 nautical miles from departure so we're going to stay subsonic for 227 nautical miles at departure there's no need to change anything else if we don't want to of course you can go later on and investigate but that's it so we need a release fuel of 90 almost 91 ton we need we need just one ton less than estimated by the the own uh, performance tool by FlySim Labs. Now the fuel distribution um, 
we have the virtual flight engineer active, so we don't need to worry about these figures. The aircraft balance, uh, we, need, we need is uh, required to click on view chart. We don't need to understand or make use of this. Once again, this is just for the flight engineer. We click on takeoff, and the takeoff is prohibited because the tailwind exceeded because we made a change here in some at uh, some point we went back to the nine runway so now we need to go through all the the tabs again route arrival payload fuel on balance 127 miles fuel distribution aircraft balance takeoff ah sorry view chart now takeoff uh, now the runway selected is two seven left uh, we are going to use reheat, yes. We've got the French style and the English style. Because French style is clicked by default, I, I've just got used to the French style just for being lazy and not having to click English style every time. Um, the information is pretty much the same, so let's stay with this one at the moment. Now for the landing, we need to select a runway. Uh, runway 4 has a tailwind of 10 knots, so let's try the standard 23 right with headwind of 7. Compute, uh, we've got, and then the final report. Now we can do two things. First, export this data to Concord. Now, one advice is that I recommend you to do this um, before loading Concord because uh, what um, Concord Performance System does is when you click on export data, it creates a new folder. If you see now this folder with all the roots is called backup. And there's another folder called ADEU, which only includes the flight we are going to go right now. So it's much easier when you click on the root reader, it's much more easy to find the root. But if you see there's now an error because it cannot longer find um, waypoint number seven. If you see now there's a problem because there's a misunderstanding between these folders. So we need to what we need to do now. Um, I will show you how to fix this. Is we're going to print this route. I've got a virtual printer in my case. Well, actually, I'm going to. I don't usually click all this, but just for this flight, I've got a virtual printer PDF uh, called PDF Factory. There are other two nice one. I can't remember this. Um, Cute print PDF and bull zip PDF. They are from memory. These two were free, as far as I remember. As far as I remember. And what I'm using is PDF Factory, which is payware and not very cheap, by the way. But it includes some functions that I, I use for other purposes. So, yes, this one is free. You just download as. Uh, I also remember there's a there was a free version somewhere if you if you non profit I, I can't remember but if you if you have a look on through the site uh, I believe you can find a, a freeware version and the same with Qt PDF. Now this one as I said is uh, no sorry the yes the workstation is almost fifty dollars so I say it's expensive but I like the way it works. So what I say is to create a PDF so I don't have to waste paper. And there it is. And then I said, open it in uh, Acrobat Reader. So what we've got here, we've got uh, our flight plan with our route, uh, weight, distribution. I usually skip these pages. I don't. I like to go directly. This is one of the first things we need, which is the fuel planning. And here it go, the decollage in French, this is the important information. The first band being the block fuel. We need to load um, 90.9 because if we round up, this will be 90.9 tons of fuel. So we go here to the menu, FS Labs, aircraft fuel. Now, there are two things we can do. We can actually move this manually to find the 91 point whatever, or there's another option, which is we've got a preset for CPS, Conco Performance System, and as you can see we've got 90.9 tons. 90.9 tons. So it's easier to do it do this that way. Now what we do now is we are going to close Conco Performance System. 
And what we do now is, we we'll click OK. And what we do now is, uh, so I'm going to close this. Have a look at these two folders, the ADEU and the backup. When we run Concord Performance System again, it's going to say, hey, I found that I made a backup version, so I'm going to restore it. So now our backup folder has disappeared and we've got all the original waypoints. So if we're going to load again now, <coughs> sorry, my graphics cards just need sometimes when when I switch from window to from one. Okay, so uh, it was card number ten. Let's make it sure. I'm going to close this one. Yeah. So we need to load card number 10 this is card number 10 we click on load and now everything is solved okay so we can move now to the next step in our checklist oh yes we still are now um we need to set these speeds uh that we read from the card so now we need to make sure that our reference speeds well in order to there are two ways of doing this you can i like to do it from left to right and then up down so i go like reading like this in columns so i do it like this or the other way to do i uh, sorry the other way to do this is just follow the tutorial so the first thing is to set the speed bugs. Okay, let's say, let's see, 162. I've got a very bad memory, so I need to check it every time. So there's the first difference. Now, if you see in the virtual cockpit, if you you've, yeah, sorry, if you use the 2D cockpit, then you can see exactly the same speed, not in the virtual cockpit. But at the same time, I found this to be more realistic because um, real pilots on Concord didn't have a precision of one knot. They had to visually, more or less, set the box. And that is exactly what we're doing here. So if our box setting is 162, we have to estimate, more or less, this is 165, so maybe one and two. Then the next is going to be 188. 190 more or less then we've got 208 and then finally um, all right next step the pitch index now the pitch index is the pitch index we need to keep uh, for our noise abatement departure uh, procedure which is 13.6 we have to round up um, in 5 so 13.5 13.5 if you see this a skip in 5 degrees so we cannot do it perfectly but just approximately 13.5 is the closest uh, what are ah, here now the reheat placard the reheat placard is here and as you can see now, it's in is indicating number three. Now, if we go back and see our aircraft Concorde, we've got four engines and four reheats. Now, for taking off, uh, this um, 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 checkup system we'll talk about it later. That is going to check that everything is working so that we can make a safe departure. Sometimes, even if one of the reheats is not working, even with one of the reheats off, it is safe to take off, depending on the weight, on the, on the altitude of the airport, of the temperature. There are several factors that can make a safe landing, uh, sorry, takeoff, even with three reheats reheat on. So this says, if we are going, this placard here is going to tell us if we need the f uh, the four reheat for a safe takeoff, or if we could be safe with only three. We see here that we need the four um, the four reheat is the reheat on. So that's what we said. Uh, next, the fuel flow. And the fuel flow it uh, it says how much fuel uh, we can burn during the takeoff, and the maximum here, uh, sorry, the maximum here is. 20.9 for engines 1, 2, and 3, 
and 20.5 uh, for engines number four. I'm not 100% sure about what I'm going to say, but as far as I remember and as far as I know, um, the special wings created special vortex of air around the aircraft. Um, now, because of the way those rotates and the way the engines work, this vortex didn't affect engines one, two and three, but they did affect engine number four. So there are several things that have to be different about engine number four uh, in order to things work properly. One of them, uh, I'll talk about this later, is limit the, the power uh, during the first steps of the takeoff. We need to reduce the power of engine number four to avoid vibrations. Now, this is one of the difference why engine number four is going to have a different fuel flow and a different pressure uh, in order to avoid these um, vibrations. So 20.9 and 20.5. here 20.9 and 20.5 the settings that uh, were calculated before are correct now the p7 is something related with pressure but i'm to say the truth i don't know exactly uh, uh, sorry uh, what happened here uh, okay 40.5 and 39.9 45 okay this is in in the virtual flight engineer and in this panel, which doesn't have any um, any shortcut, any keyboard shortcut, so we need to manually select it here. 40.5 and 39.9. Let me check. 40.5 and 39.9. Okay, that is correct. So continue after the P7 fuel. Now, things get interesting here. And once again, I'm going to stop the video here and make a new section. Um, because reheat were very noisy, but at the same time they were necessary for a safe takeoff, we need to turn on reheat during takeoff. But then, and as soon as possible, um, we need to switch off the reheat uh, so that we can comply with the nose abatement procedures. Of course, uh, that means that um okay let I, i'm going to find this was a picture explaining all this and it will be easier using that picture it's somewhere around uh, i think yeah here so what happens we land was oh, sorry we take off with full power then we maintain the pitch angle and then uh, once the noise time, I'll talk about the noise time, what happens now. Because we are going to turn off reheat, obviously we are going to have an important decrease in power. And because we've got less power, we need to decrease the attitude, we need to decrease the, the, the pitch, so that um, to, uh, to keep, be able to maintain the, the, the maximum 250 knot uh, speed restriction. Then, when we reach 8,000 feet, then the uh, the noise abatement procedure ends, and there we can uh, recover full power and and get our maximum climb speed. So we take off full power, reheat on after a certain amount of time that we'll I'll talk about it now. Then we need to turn off reheat. Turn off reheat means a decrease in power. Uh, not only um, not only the afterburners, the reheat are off, but uh, also the flight engineer reduced the throttle power. Um, because there's an important reduction in the power, we need to uh, decrease also very importantly the, the attitude approximately to 12 degrees in order to be able to maintain the speed. After 8,000 feet, no abatement procedure is off and then we continue the climb. So, uh, we go here, and then the reheat time, uh, the calculation by Conco Performance System was 64 seconds. These 64 seconds mean 1 minute and 4 seconds. So we need to reset this timer. <coughs> Sorry, we move to chrono, then back to timer. 
and then we uh, left click if you see there are some signs fast slow uh, hold let's go to fast carefully and then for the last seconds we do them slow then when we get to 64 seconds one minute and four seconds we um, leave it again in the wrong position two three and four yeah this is sometimes annoying but you have to wait that's the only way to do it and if you keep it in fast for for too long it's very easy to um, to skip and and get a higher time that you actually need so after this one minute and four seconds and once the takeoff monitor is activated again i'll talk about the takeoff monitor later um, the virtual flight engineer will automatically switch off the reheat and reduce the uh, throttle power and that's exactly the next step uh, we need to set the throttle power to 16.7 degrees so after the reheat is off also we are going to need uh, we are going to need to uh, set the throttle angle lever to 16.7 so shift number six and then here on the left and here on the right in this black strip to the sides of the um, of the throttle then we can set the 16.7 was yeah 16.7 so we've got 16.7 degrees that's the throttle level angle and we can continue with the checklist now so let's go back to where we were which should be around here okay so finished now seatbelt sign on shift number three i close this i close the menu bar all right and now even if it's not in the checklist i do them i do this simple task directly because they are lo both logical and memory we turn the no smoking and the sister fast and the fasten seat belts very very next in just a couple of seconds we are in the checklist asks us to uh, activate the anti-collision lights so i do it already and also in the checklist we need to lock the cockpit door so we do this already even though if it's not in the checklist it's something we do in advance then we've got some information as you can see highlighting the all the items that i only need to do actually helps me a lot to follow the checklist accurately and um, to find whatever i need very quickly now the door list uh, in this case i have not activated doors uh, so all doors of course are locked by the way um, doors are open in Concord in a different way if we activate for example shift E which is the standard for opening door we see main door opening but actually none of the doors are open now if you see here in the shift control shift one panel all doors are closed if we want to open our doors we need to get to the add-ons uh, FS labs and then we go to keyboard commands and we see that for the doors the command is shift tab 1 shift tab 2 shift tab whatever so let's make an example shift tab uh, 4 now we've got we've heard the gong that one open door is open and as you can see we've got the warning that the front right door is open so shift tab four and we close it so that's where we check in that all doors are closed the master warning is now off all right so let's continue we've checked the door lights now we need to recall the master warnings and then cancel we recall the master warnings we see all the master warnings that were triggered okay and then we right button here and cancel anti-collision lies i told you is just a couple of steps below throttles make sure they are at idle then we don't want to slam the terminal so make sure they are at idle the flight deck door locked i told you before it was 
going to be very close. Now, there's another step we need to follow. We are just going to uh, switch start the engines. Now, um, there's something we have to do which is called Debo, but uh, I will explain it later. Right now, only you need only to know that we need to... Well, there's a step here that um, just two days ago, after a very, very long time, uh, I read in the forum that uh, what I'm going to explain here is not the right procedure. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if this step is actually misplaced or not. So I'm going to tell you the two versions. Now, the version in the tutorial says that we set the engine ground idle to high. That means that during idle, engines and run to are going to run uh, higher, with a higher uh, performance. One of the reasons I've always thought this is to help the engines to start. And once the engines are already started, then we set it to low. Now, the other option is that uh, this step is required only during takeoff and that we use low for taxing because we don't need that much power and that we need high uh, until uh, the Concorde accelerate above 60 knots. And after 60 knots, these are again automatically uh, treated in, in the opposite position. For the time being, and, and until I don't check this is the right thing to do, uh, I've always done this, set the, the, the idle engines to high for starting. Second step is um, control shift 7, sorry, or 7 or 6, 7, yes. Uh, we need to turn on the generators. That means that when the engines are running, they are going to produce the electricity we need uh, in order to feed the aircraft and so that we no longer are going to require ground power. Um, right now, because the engines are off, there's no effect, but as soon as one of the engines is running, we'll see that uh, we are going to get some electricity from, from that engine. Let's go now and start engine number one. Now, there's something important about the sequence. Uh, it was somewhere in the in the tutorial. I haven't marked it, but the the um, the sequence we are going to follow in the tutorial uh, here. The normal starting order is three, four, and then two, one. But in this tutorial, we are going to use and then engines three and two, while the engines is uh, while the aircraft is still on the ramp, and that is a security procedure. I don't really much know about this, but. Um, well, I just want to tell you, mm, shift and control one, we get to the um, engine starting and we need, need to set the Debo, the four uh, engine Debo's to Debo position. Uh, in, in, in a moment, I will explain why. And then to start the engines, remember, we have three positions left would be for re relight. Relight is if for whatever the reasons, one of the engines um, shut off during flight. If we are on the ground and we are going to start the engines, then we need to set them to start. Uh, so we need to right click in order for this switch to go down. Then we have to make sure that we've requested uh, from the ground services, we have requested power and we have requested ground air. If the engines don't spin, if they don't start, that's very likely because we haven't required ground air, the air that we need to start moving the engines. Let's make a try without requesting to see if we've got air already. So right click, go down to start, and yes, we've got air. As you can see, engine number two, um, engine number three, sorry, the N2 start to go up and the RPM. Now, when we reach about 11% of rotation, then um, shift number three, we can open the high pressure valve for engine number three and we ingest some fuel in it. So, the, as you can see, the fuel flow increases. We are in injecting some 
fuel. Now, at around 45, 25%, the uh, engine start goes off. And then it stabilizes around uh, 30%. Now, we go to the flight engineer panel and then we start our cron. And we have to lift the engines for one minute in this position to stabilize. Uh, stabil stable, stabilize? I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, the reason is that um, uh, the engine's oil needs to heat up uh, before we apply the normal the normal power. Until the engine is not heated up, now we see that after some time it just goes up. And then the Debo, we need to set it off. Now, one engine is running and we need to start the second engine. You see that um, some of the panels went live, that's when the, the, um, the power red generator, as you can see now we've got a red electrical current and we are no longer, use, no longer using the ground power. So what we do now is to right click to start engine number two, we hold until we are approximately at 11%, and then at 11%, we activate the HP valve. And then it increases, goes up around 25%. It's going to switch to off. I'm not doing it. It's going to do it on its own, as you can see. And then we need to wait for approximately one minute at 30%. Now, that's in theory. Uh, in practice, once it's around 30% if we don't need to wait we can just switch off the Debo and it will uh, the RPM will increase now let's make it rotate and let's check to the following let's go to the following point now we check that the hydraulics are working properly so we click shift number two then we go to hydraulic panels and switch on the green channel and the blue channel now, the yellow, uh, I told you, was a standby hydraulic system and it's always charged. It will always have pressure whenever the landing gear is down. If we check this system, once the landing gear is up, the pressure will slowly go down. Now, we've got the alarm for the primary flight control and we are off. Now, I'm going to pause because engines are eating now a lot of fuel and because we are not doing anything special is a waste of fuel so we've checked the hydraulics now the second thing we need to do is activate the brake fans and also call the ground crew so that they disconnect all the ground pro ground power and and air from the aircraft so that we can start the pushback and then uh, once once the pushback is in process we can start the other two remaining engines so what we do is um, release the pause, uh, shift number three, left click, ground call, the yellow, the orange button illuminate and then after a minute or so it's going to uh, light off, which means that we are already disconnected and safe for, for the ground crew. Shift number two, brake panels, brake fans on. You were just waiting for the ground crew. There it is. So now we can release parking brakes and then start the pushback, shift P and number one, so that we turn. Now, we are disconnected from the ground. So in order to start the other two engines, shift number two, we need to go to the air bleed control. We open the air bleed from our own engines and we see a pressure of around 25 PSI. Engines number one and four, because they are down and spected, they don't have any air pressure, but we can open the cross bleed valves and share this air pressure. So now we've got air pressure in all four engines and we can continue the startup procedures for number four and number one. Now, we really should do one by one, but if you are in a hurry or if you are not worried about following very precise procedures, you can actually start two engines at the same time. Once again, this is not the standard procedure but uh, I just want to mention that it is possible if you see the flight engineer has just changed some settings regarding the auto ignition and the auto throttle 
uh, around 30%. We can now deactivate the bow. And we just let the engine spin up. So we continue with checklist. But the air bleed was open to start the engines. And now, once the four engines are running, we need to switch off, um, shut the cross bleed valves, and then open the air condition the air conditioning valve. So we. I hate this, yes. Come on. Okay, there we are. Whoops. Uh, stop the pushback and set parking brakes. Now engines are running, so shift number two. And then the air bleed control. Cross the cross bleed. Open the condition valve. Now, what I've always done in, at this step, although as I said in the forum was this was discussed, is engines are running now, so we don't need the high anymore. I set it to low and have a look how the fuel flow goes down um, almost by half. Now, uh, even if it's not in the checklist, we are going to do this very in, in very next. So we need to change the engine control schedule to fly over for our departure nose abatement. And we also need to set and limit the end um, the N2 of the engine number four to a 28 percent to avoid those vibration I talked about later. Uh, sorry, I talked about uh, before. So we continue. Now we need to check the nose wheel steering, and which is done here. We first we reset, left click, and check all the lights. Right click and check these other warnings. Now, something very important. I'm going to make another pause. And well, actually, I believe this is an excellent point to make um, uh, to cut this video out and then start another session, another episode, if you want to call it, of this tutorial about Concordex by Flashing Labs. So maybe it's a nice time to grab a coffee or a tea or have a break. Okay, see you in the next video.